Your guide would cut your throat for $10. And even if he didn't, you'd be shot by bandits or scalped by Indians. My gun is your safe passage. You're going to need it. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. You know, hey boy, I'm bored this afternoon. Too much of the same thing. Oh, you saw me, Mr. Paladin. Mm. If only something different would happen. I say, Porter. Oh, oh something different, Mr. Paladin. Oh, which is the way to Flea Town, Montana? Flea Town? Ah, uh, yes. Perhaps I might help. My name is Paladin. Oh, I thank you, sir. I'm James Brunswick. Hey, boy, bring Mr. Brunswick some brandy. No, no, you're very kind, but I, I can't tell you. You see, my, my father, the 8th Earl of Aylesbury, invested money in this ranch in Montana, and now that my brother's dead, his share was left to me. And you're going there to take possession? Precisely, yes. Uh -huh. My interest is high. <laughs> the rest is owned by a fifth cousin, a Miss Felicia Carson. That I must make arrangements to get there quickly. A, a lone woman attempting to run a large ranch. Well, you understand. Yes, of course. I imagine she'll be pleased to have man's help. Oh, quite. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll hop a train and I'll just pop in on her in a day or two. <laughs> Three weeks will be closer to the truth. Oh? The train will drop you about 200 miles from Fleet Town. From there on, it's horseback over the mountains. Oh. <laughs> well, then, in that case, I might do a bit of hunting. I shall hire a guide. And he'll cut your throat for your money. Good gracious. No, you couldn't do it alone. You get lost, shot by bandits, or scalped. Well, it's rather awkward. <laughs> now, uh, what's the solution? This. Hmm? Her gun will travel. Oh, I say. Uh, I mean, the gun, I mean, is it necessary? Not always. But sometimes it's mighty useful. If dandruff dulls your hair, leaves your scalp itchy, please listen. You can get rid of annoying dandruff so fast today, no one should suffer any longer. With Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. Besides that, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And while removing dandruff, Fitch can also brighten hair up to 35%. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too, use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. <laughs> James Brunswick, 9th Earl of Aylesbury, endured the three-week ride over the mountains with the help of an English saddle, a sun helmet, and two pack horses carrying his trunks and carpet bags. He marveled at the size, the coldness, the expanse, and the beauty of the land. There were some Indians lounging around the general store when we rode into Flea Town. They stared at him, fascinated. He stared back, fascinated. We dismounted and walked up the steps. This is Flea Town, mister. You looking for someone special? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Miss Felicia Carson. Perhaps you can direct us to the King's Arms Ranch, sir? I'll be danged. Miss Carson? What is it, Wally? Ma'am, I think your cousin from England just got here. What? You, you James Brunswick? Yes, that's right. Oh, well, I reckon you are my kinfolk. Oh, my goodness, Cousin Felicia. Why, this is delightful. <laughs> well, I reckon I'm pleased to meet you. I'm delighted. Uh, this is my friend, Mr. Paladin. A pleasure, Miss Carson. The same. Uh, this here is Waddy, my foreman. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, you go see if them horses is shod yet, Waddy. Yes, ma'am. Who is crazy clothes? I beg your pardon. Crazy clothes. Harry, you, you go on about your business. Quit standing around staring. And take your braves with you. 
Go on now, go on. <laughs> Crazy clothes. <laughs> uh, I say, Cousin Felicia, there's a savage is. <laughs> no, no, them's Harry Blackfoot, Little Horse, and a few of the boys from across the road is all. James was disappointed that we didn't see any Indians on the trail. Well, uh, good thing, too. The only braves you'd run into up there'd be a war party taking scalps. Oh, Harry and them a lot more peaceable. They ain't smeared war paint in years. War paint? Taking scalps? By Jove, it's all true, then. Just as I've read. Makes good reading, but it's nothing you'd care to see. <laughs> no, no, I expect not. Well, well. Now, this is your cousin all the way from England, huh? Now, look, Angie, let's not have <laughs> now, any... wait a minute! <laughs> you the one who shot that poor little bear cub on that pack horse? I shot him, sir, but he's scarcely a cub. Listen to him, boy. <laughs> Why, mister, you just ain't acquainted with the Montana breed of bear. Full grow, they're as big as this house. Really? Well, I, I, I never heard of any animal that large. I've only been in on the kill of one full-size Montana bear myself. I was with the Army. Took a ten-pound shot to bring him down. How extraordinary. And you know what we found when we peeled a hide off him? No, what? Why, bear skin, you blame fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I must say the joke is on me, what? Hey, it sure is. What a dude. Hmm? Come on, let's get up. Oh. <laughs> you, you tripped me. How's the water in the horse drop? <laughs> I guess it's the horse on you. <laughs> you think that's funny, do you? You must admit a man swimming in a horse trough looks pretty foolish. Not as foolish as you will with your jaw busted. Seems like N.G. finally bit on one himself and he don't like the sour taste. You're kind of handy with your practical jokes, mister. Next time it might be better to let a man become acquainted with the local customs before you try to make a fool of him. In the 1800s, the Monroe Doctrine dictated that Americans put a wall between themselves and the world. Today, however, times have changed. From city dweller to farmer, Americans know they are part of the world and close to it. And the more they can find out about it, the better. That's why the broadcasts of Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas are so popular. Each of these internationally known newsmen has a wide background in the history, the politics, the economics on which current events are built. Whether you're interested in high-level affairs of state abroad, economic developments here at home, or the latest advances of science, you'll find them presented clearly and understandably by Murrow and Thomas, with the touch of wit or human interest that has won them listeners everywhere in the world. If you're not already addicted to the news, as CBS Radio presents it nightly, start this week to follow the broadcasts of Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas. They're both heard Monday through Friday on most of these same CBS stations. James Brunswick, 9th Earl of Aylesbury, changed to knickers once we got to the ranch. After tea and a pipe, he picked up his riding crop and announced it was time to look things over. Felicia Carson reckoned it was time. I tagged along. We made a circuit of the main ranch buildings and ended up sometime around dusk back at the corrals. Well, that's the works, Jamie. These buildings, 6,000 head of cattle and 12,000 acres of land. It's immense, absolutely immense. And you've been looking after all this alone. You know, you're an amazing woman, Felicia. Had to be done. Well, now that I'm here, I intend to take this burden off your shoulders. You just sit back and be the lady of the manor, huh? Well, uh, thanks, Jamie, but uh, for a while, you just sort of take it easy and don't strain yourself none. Uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm going up to the house. Supper's in a half an hour. What? Well, I, uh, I'm afraid that she doesn't take me very seriously, Paladin. Uh, that'll change. Right now, you're sort of unusual to her. <laughs> to everyone. You know, I've been thinking about uh, N.G. and his little joke this morning. I, um, I was being tested, wasn't I? Yeah. And they think that a man who can be tricked is a fool. See, around here they figure there are two kinds of no good people, cowards and fools. In a rough situation, the coward will run out on you, and the fool might make a fatal mistake. And I showed myself up to be a fool. No. But you showed you've got a lot to learn. 
Let's say you've lost face. Mm -hmm. You don't quite fit in yet. Uh, how does one go about fitting in, Paladin? Mm, well, here. This is your saddle. Mm -hmm. English. Made for riding. Nothing else, right? Well, what else is there? Well, look at the saddle of mine. A western saddle. But yeah, it was a cumbersome, heavy sort of thing. Mm, maybe, but there's a reason for everything. See the horn here? Mm -hmm. Tie post when roping cattle and elbow rest for a man in the saddle all day. I see. And the height and the slope of the cattle here. See that? Mm -hmm. I figure to give a man the most comfort and the best brace through a day's work. Oh, the rigging, the cinch, the stirrups, the stirrup leathers are all designed to contribute something useful. There isn't a piece of leather on this saddle that isn't needed. Uh-huh. Well, I must confess, I thought it was an unwieldy piece of business. No, nothing on the frontier is without a definite purpose. No individual is without a definite purpose either. Survival's too difficult. Everything and everyone must contribute something, and you'll just have to find a thing that you have to contribute. I say, tell him look. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, they're attacking us. They shouldn't be hostile here. They're showing themselves too openly. Oh, no. You see, they're firing in the air. Hey, they put down that rifle. Well, why did you knock the rifle? You shut up, you hit him. Come on, huh? Well, it, it looks like... Well, that, that's the one, Harry Blackfoot. All right, now, hold still, Harry. Let me see. Yeah. Why, crazy... Oh, you just... Take it easy now. Of all the fool tricks, screaming like a bunch of medicine show squaws. It serves you right, Harry. Hey, can I help? And you say it was a joke. Everybody have fun. And you say... High in the chest. It's a bad one. You do this, Englishman? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was a joke. I... Take him to the house. No. No, we take care of our chief. Well, I, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am. Why couldn't you wait and find out what it was about before you... Oh, never mind. We'll go into town in the morning. Maybe they'll listen to reason. We ain't had no Indian trouble here in years until you come along, you dang fool. Hmm. She put that kind of strong. What was that you said about a fool? A fool that makes fatal mistakes? Toward greater victories, the March of Dimes is again asking your help to wipe out the deadly cripplers of thousands of children and adults. Not only polio, but arthritis and birth defects. Did you know that one out of every seven persons in the United States will suffer from arthritis, an exceedingly painful disease for which no cure has yet been found, and that it menaces our youngsters as well as older people? And did you know that one out of every 16 babies born this year will have a birth defect? You have helped the March of Dimes fight polio and emerge the winner in the battle. And now your 1959 contribution to the March of Dimes can help win the battle with these other awful cripplers. We did it before, and with your help, we can do it again. Send your gift of money to your local March of Dimes headquarters. Send it tonight. There was tension in Flea Town after Harry Blackfoot was shot. No one knew what the Indians might do about him. They had him holed up in an old barn, feeding him whiskey and working on his wounds. At least that was the news we got. When are you, when are you figuring to leave, Paladin? Mm, tomorrow. Uh, take him back with you for his own good. How long do you think he'd last out here before somebody blows his head off? You could learn, if you'd help him. I'm running a ranch, not a school. No, it isn't as if I don't like Jamie. Well, then don't send him away. This ranch would give him a purpose in life. You need him. To shoot Indians? Would it be better if he'd run away and hid? Well, he, he should have used his head before he used that rifle. He reacted the way any man would. He was attacked, picked up the rifle, and defended himself. Uh, good morning. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Morning. Now, when we get to town, Jamie, you let me do the talking. The Indians are probably cooled down by now. If Harry Blackfoot is all right. N.G. started this, and it's up to him to stop it. Now, James, I just want you to show up and stand there, like you got nothing to be ashamed of. 
Yes, of course. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I... Uh, Paladin, I, I'd appreciate it if you would stay here until we clear up this matter, and then uh, I'd like to return to San Francisco with you. If that's what you want. Well, I, I believe it would be best for everyone. Oh, uh, there he is, propped up against the log under the tree. Harry Blackwood seems to be recovering very well. Ah, uh, he's drunk. They're all drunk. Look at that barrel of whiskey. Bet they got it from N.G. We better get N.G. before we try talking to Harry. Now, you can't stay out here alone, James. Come with us. Well, uh, I'd like to apologize to that fellow. Oh, no, not right now. Are you blessed to trouble make you got the engines all stewed up to blame fool Don't you... Don't you try to squirm out of this, putting all the blame on Jamie. Well, I didn't have anything... N.G., you're going out with us now and tell Harry Blackfoot exactly why all this is your fault. My fault? I don't have to explain that to you, N.G. Them engines is in no mood to listen to reason now. They'd kill me. If you don't go out there, I'll kill you. Send out crazy clothes! Where's my rifle? You kill any one of them and word will spread to every Indian in the section. And every one of them would be wearing paint in 24 hours. You get out there and tell them to stop it. I can't stop them. They want the Englishman. He's right. Well, where do you think you're going? Out there. There's little choice, is there? You can't go out there, Jamie. Well, I can't endanger your life or be the cause of an uprising. Stop him! If he can get across the street, maybe he can get to Harry. Paladin, why didn't you stop him? Sometimes a man has things to prove to himself. It's a rundown. They're going to swipe him down and trample him. Oh, no. He's getting up. Here comes another one. No man can take that kind of punishment. Oh, no. He's getting up again. He's trying to get to Harry Blackfoot. I'm going out there. Wait here. They'll kill you too, Paladin, if you interfere. Right. Harry. Call him off, Harry. No. Braves teach lesson. We could have shot your braves by now, but that would have made a war. He's had his lesson. He's been hurt enough. Crazy clothes on his feet. Listen to me, Harry. Only a few may wear clothes like that. It is a proud uniform from a far-off land. Only brave and honorable men wear that uniform. The, the clothes are the sign of a great and wise leader. A, a man of strength. Um, a man like yourself. You see how he behaves? Enough! I, I, I feel I owe you an apology, old man. I, I'm really dread, dreadfully sorry, you know. Inexcusable. I... You're right. He brave man. Feeling better, Jamie? Oh, much, thank you, yes. Fortunate the store carried my size in stock. Uh, how, how do you like me? Do I look like a rancher? Paladin? <laughs> I guess you do at that. Well, come on in, Harry. Where'd he get your clothes? Uh, he requested them. Only brave and honorable men wear this uniform. Great and wise leaders. That's right, Harry. Me and that one, Englishman. No one else? No one else. Uh, good. Well, he seems quite happy. Uh, now, Paladin, shall we return to the ranch and pack? Oh, you're not, you're not going to run out and leave me now, Jamie. You can't do that to me. I, I'm just a mere little old woman. That, that ranch needs a man. Oh, thank you for the offer, Felicia, but really, I'm afraid there's so little that I have to contribute out here. Except courage. Oh, come now, Paladin. I mean, one, one doesn't talk about that sort of thing. Mr. Paladin, you're traveling back to San Francisco alone. Well, if, if you insist, I stay. One favor before I leave, James. Oh, yes, of course. I'd like the address of your tailor in London. 
If I sent him my measurements, perhaps he could make me a brave and honorable chief. Oh, you bought me so Paladin. But where is man from the bowler hat? He's ranching in Montana. Oh, him? Montana? Oh, he changed clothes. Well, but, Excuse well, me, please. <laughs> Can either of you tell me the way to Henrysville, Oregon? Oh, sure. Uh, best is to go to a street at the end of town there. You Oregon can't... and Henrysville are a long ways off. Oh, 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 oh. And difficult to get to. Oh, but you see, I really must get to Henrysville. A cousin of mine, a rancher, died. And it's my duty to take over the management of the ranch. Oh, boy. And you've just arrived from England and you're in a hurry. Well, yes, that's quite correct, as a matter of fact. My name is Paladin. May I offer you my service? Would you... Have garden, will travel. What kind of service? Sit down, please. Hey, boy. A glass of sherry for Miss... Uh... Worthshire. Lady Angela Worthshire. Uh, for Lady Angela. And hurry. Oh, you saw I get sherry right away. Oh, Lady Angela. Oh, boy. Tally ho, Mr. Paladin. Uh, now, Lady Angela, I think I should tell you... Must you hold my hand? It's an American custom. You must accustom yourself to American customs. Oh. Well, now the service you spoke of. It begins tonight, at 8 o'clock. A dinner at Fabre's, then a glass of sparkling wine at the Porter, and then a tour of San Francisco. You must see the points of interest before you leave. But I feel I'm already indulging myself in something interesting. Lady Angela, I know I can assist you. Do you know something, Mr. Paladin? I'm quite certain you can. Have gun. We'll travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, he is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Sam Rolfe and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Ralph Moody, Gene Bates, Barney Phillips, James Nusser, and Harry Bartell. Hugh Douglas speaking. Have Gun, Will Travel salutes station KRMG Tulsa, Oklahoma, which became CBS Radio's newest affiliate on Monday, January 5th. KRMG covers 93 counties and reaches about a million families in the Southwest and operates on 50,000 watts daytime and 25,000 nighttime. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.